Morning everyone, it is Friday, September the 9th. I actually have a pretty busy day planned. I've been renting out the unit here as an Airbnb since Robin moved out, um, which she's been on the road for a lot, so she hasn't been here for like a month or two. So I have guests coming this weekend, and as it turns out, the hot tub upstairs on the deck uh, isn't heating properly, so I've got a guy coming to repair that right now. And then tonight, uh, I fly out. I'm actually going to Tampa, Florida for a few days before going to the Olympia next weekend. I'm going to be doing at least one collab uh, that I'm really excited about with another YouTuber. And so it is almost 11 a.m. I haven't had breakfast yet. Here's meal one. Uh, I've got oatmeal, chocolate chips, egg whites, raspberries, and I'm also gonna have a kiwi. Kiwis are extremely high in a lot of different vitamins and minerals, so I try to eat these pretty much one a day. So is it heating up? Yeah. So what did you do? I just adjusted the temperature. See, so you 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 can't <laughs> tell what these buttons are for. No, because I can't bring these. That's right. Again. Back. Oh, so you press the button once, it goes down. Press it again, it goes up. That's right. Oh, Same so button controls up and down, down right? Oh, okay. So yeah. All right. Okay. And all the filter and everything is all good. Well. You know what? It's, it's working. It's working way better now. It's like so. What one is the jet ski? Is the button level a little low? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna dump a couple of buckets of water in there now. Guys, it's 6 p.m. I'm here at the Kelowna International Airport. My flight is out at 7.30, uh, so I decided to get a beer. And uh, I didn't have a whole lot of calories today, so it's just a light beer. And I'm gonna finish editing my last video uh, while I'm here. And I've got a lot of traveling ahead of me, so uh, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm gonna get caught up on some sleep and reading and listening to podcasts, which are all things that I love to do. So I made it to Tampa. It is now 1.35 the next day. It actually didn't feel that long at all and I actually slept pretty much the entire duration of the flight from Toronto to Tampa. Um, so I do actually feel pretty well rested. But right now I just called an Uber and that's coming to pick me up and bring me to my Airbnb. That's what I'll check in with you guys once I get there. I'm really touristy. I'm gonna take videos and stuff. <laughs> you don't mind. I can tell. Go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> I love my Look right at the fork. That's so cool. Huh? That's so cool with the plane. All right, I'll just grab my stuff. Thanks again. Okay. See ya. Getting here to my Airbnb. This is place. So yeah, guys, this is the Airbnb. Uh, you come in, there's a couch here, TV, fireplace, the kitchen area. I'm starving, so I'm gonna have a couple of these tuna that I didn't eat. <clears throat> Out here is the deck area. Oh, what's up, man? Yeah, I feel like I'll smoke myself trying to get in that thing. <laughs> I got an Uber on the way to take me to the grocery store. Uh, there's like not a whole lot of high protein foods here, so I'm gonna go get some egg whites, oatmeal, um, maybe some chicken and rice, and just the bodybuilding basics to kind of get me through. So many Pop-Tart flavors here, it's actually crazy. Like maple bacon, pink lemonade Pop-Tarts. I've never even heard of these. Best thing about the southern states.
Okay, now life's like, life's like just like a tango. Tango, you gotta move that, move that, don't break an ankle. Ain't gonna tell me if you see me, see me. So here's meal one. I've got egg whites, one whole egg, uh, kiwi, Ritz with one teaspoon of sugar, a couple drops of milk, and the rest with water. And I just wait until that creams up, and then I just eat it like that. All right, what's up, everyone? Uh, so I'm back with another voiceover, and just as a forewarning, uh, this voiceover isn't going to have a whole lot to do with the workout itself. Um, rather, I want to spend this time discussing what I believe to be the relative importance of progressive overload and talk about how it is and why it is that I like to train somewhat more sporadically when I'm traveling. And the reason for this is that you guys, or some of you guys might notice that this back workout differs quite a bit in terms of the exercise selection uh, from my last back workout. And so I wanna explain the sort of rationale behind it. While I think that it's very common in bodybuilding generally uh, for people to train just completely randomly, I think that the most rigorous and science-based coaches and athletes do tend to structure their training in a way that exercises are kept more or less constant across a training phase, wherein the goal is to progressively overload by either adding some weight or some reps or or sets over time. At the very least, you should have some sort of core exercise structure that doesn't change much from week to week, at least across a specific training phase. Um, if you change things up too frequently in terms of exercises, then you're not likely to actually overload those movements as effectively or efficiently. And progressive overload as a concept has a ton of empirical support dating all the way back to the 1940s when a US Army medical doctor named Thomas DeLorne developed what he called the progressive resistance exercise model as a means of rehabilitating soldiers after World War II. And so while progressive overload does have a ton of support in the scientific literature, I think that it can, you know, like most things, be taken too far. Uh, like when people think that there always needs to be a clear measurable overloading stimulus on every exercise in order to induce a hypertrophic adaptation. And I think that this clearly isn't true. And it's this sort of mindset that I think can lead folks to avoiding any sort of variation in their programming, such as when traveling or training at a new gym or with a different training partner. And this actually reminds me of the sort of behavior wherein people are fearful to eat out at restaurants because they don't want to go off on their macros. And so the bottom line for me is that too much focus on progressive overload can lead to monotony and staleness, which in my experience can be a major factor, if not the major cause of plateauing in advanced athletes. And there's literature to support this as well. And this is part of the reason why periodization or planned and periodic alterations in programming variables tends to be so effective. And in my experience, having a week or even just a couple of sessions where you more or less just go in and do random stuff can be very refreshing psychologically and might also be of benefit physiologically, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. It's been said that a change is as good as a rest. And I think that the relation to training programming here is that perhaps you're not plateauing because you need a deload week. Perhaps your training has just become monotonous or stale. This is why for some people, myself included, I recommend taking what I'm calling a free training week, which is different from a deload in that the goal isn't to mitigate fatigue, but rather to simply restore freshness. In doing so, you would still want to keep the effort levels relatively high. You'd want to still exert yourself hard in the training. But I currently think that there is mounting data suggesting that it's perhaps more important to exert oneself close to the point of failure so that even if you might not be presenting a measurable overloading stimulus on a specific exercise, you're at least activating a full spectrum of motor units and will be sufficiently activating the molecular pathways that then signal for hypertrophy. Training close to failure isn't required for growth to occur. You can clearly hypertrophy a muscle without training to failure. However, if you're not going to be presenting an overload stimulus, I think that this serves as a sort of safety net. Just to get back to the physiological impact of employing this style of training occasionally, presenting the muscle with an overloading stimulus is extremely important in terms of maxing out the mechanical tension component of hypertrophy. However, I think we should also keep in mind that there are still two other determinants, muscle damage and metabolic stress, and these aren't quite as inextricably linked to progressive tension overload. Overload. And so even if tension isn't, say, optimized by doing a few random workouts, um, I think one could argue that that is simply made up for by the muscle damage and metabolic components 
contributing more. And so guys, I just conclude this commentary by saying that I think that once in a while, especially if your goal is pure hypertrophy, I wouldn't be too afraid to step outside your normal routine and simply just focus on training hard. It may sound a little bit simplistic, but I think that there's really value in that. And I think that a lot of high level athletes have gotten to the point where they simply just know how to push themselves hard. They don't seem, at least in my eyes, to have a whole lot of trouble with progressing. So guys, that's going to conclude this commentary. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoy these last few clips. Finished up with the workout, and now we're here at... This is what I always do. Something blue? What is it? Okay. We're here at Samurai Blue Restaurant. It's in um, a place in Tampa called... It's in a place in Tampa called Emor. Emor. Y B O R. So started with the miso soup. This sake beer on tap, which is actually very good. Edamame. I always get this because it's like, it's quite high protein. And the rolls that I got are not super high protein. I've also only had two meals today. I would guess... 15 grams of protein in this. I usually just get a California roll, some sort of tuna or salmon. So this is a spicy salmon roll. It looks really, really good. Um, and then this is called dynamite roll. I think it's called dynamite. No, I'm gonna call it dynamite roll. I actually forget what it's called though. But in any event, it's shrimp inside and asparagus mango. And then there's like, I think these are tempura bits on top, uh, an avocado. Kamikaze roll. I actually have no idea what this stuff is, but it looks really, really good in a sec. Hey, how are you doing? Well, these are all popsicles. They're all made with fresh fruit. They only use natural ingredients. Oh, thank you. Sure. It's actually very good. It tastes, it tastes very natural. Like it tastes um, unsweetened, kind of. Uh, it tastes like a frozen kiwi. I don't know, it tastes exactly like it was just like kiwi frozen into a popsicle shape. I would give it like an 8 out of 10 as far as popsicles go. As far as like general foods go, popsicles are like not that good anyway, so it's like a 5. A million, one, a million, two.